Oh, there we go. Oh, see, I didn't. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad I have the comment section. I still had the mute button on my mic. <laughs> So thank you. Um, thank you, Esther. <laughs> um, again, I was just saying, apparently just talking to myself that, sorry, I had to reschedule this uh, from last week because I was sick and I just really lost my voice. So I'm so happy I'm feeling better this week. And what makes me even feel, you know, really better is sewing. So I'm going to be sewing the Kawartha cardi jacket today and I love this pattern I haven't sewn it in a long time and I'll just wait I know there's like a little delay on the chat I just want to make sure that people are hearing me now uh, I hope just the button on my microphone <laughs> worked so please let me know if you can hear me now before I dive into the demo and sewing let's see I'm pretty sure that worked. It has been a while since I have set up this live, so I'm a little <laughs> rusty. Um, and then again, uh, being sick as well. So I did do a little hack to this pattern. I combined uh, the Sherpa that I that I used for the original pattern as well as a... Okay, great, you can hear me, good. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Um, so I'll just keep keep talking. Um, I cut the sleeves in the Sherpa as well as the facing. So it's going to be a sweatshirting fabric and a Sherpa fabric. And oh my gosh, I just realized I'm wearing, I think it, this was one of the first fashion sewing lives. I'm wearing the Dolman sweater. I actually ended up hacking it to short sleeve. Um, cause sometimes it gets, you know, especially doing these lives too and working in a sewing suit, you can get a little hot. You have the lights, you have the iron steam. So I love wearing it around the house, but, uh, I like just the shorter sleeves to keep me cool while sewing. So I'm going to head over to my table and we can start pinning and start sewing the, this Quartha Cardi jacket together. And sorry about being muted at the beginning. One day <laughs> I will get it right. All right, and just wait till you see what pants I'm wearing because they're super fun. Ah, oh, I love a printed pants. Okay, so I have the instructions um, printed out. And so as I was saying, the hack, I have the facing pieces cut out in this Sherpa fabric. And I cut the back facing as well and the sleeves. So what I did for the sleeves is on the sewing pattern, I just like literally cut a line. So you can see, this is my front piece right here. I'll open it up. I actually think this is the same fabric that I'm actually wearing. Oh no, it's a bit different. Yeah, this is a bit different than, uh, than this. So I just basically, drew a line and this is for reference I cut this out last week um, so I forget the exact measurement but I'll measure it for you 13 inches so I cut it 13 inches long so it's not really a cuff it's more like a Sherpa sleeve but you could make it a cuff if you want to so 13 inches up I cut a line added some seam allowance um, and we are good to go. So I think that's the first step that I'm going to sew uh, is attaching my sleeves. So I'm just gonna remove my facings from my table. So oh my gosh, there's, I thought I shook out all the fuzzies for the Sherpa because cutting fuzzy fabrics can be quite, well, fuzzy. <laughs> they shed. So I always have a lint roller. This is a great tip to have like when you're doing like, I'm even just like, um, there's like already a bunch of fuzz kind of gathering around my table. So I'll have that um, close by. So I'm just going to open up my fronts. I am going to take my sleeve. And again, I always always keep my pattern pieces on my fabric pieces as like right up until the second that I'm going to sew it because this is labeled front and I mean it looks so similar to the back so 
so I don't get them confused. And now I see, I know that the the uh, side seam has the multi-size line, so I know that this edge matches up with this. So I'm going to go like that and just pin the right sides together. And then I'm going to shift this up. Okay, making sure. Okay. Yeah, and that was like that. So I'll pin those right sides together. Oh, those are, this is going to be so cute. Okay, so I'm going to do as much pinning as I can, and then I'm going to do as much sewing as I can. Oh, my God. <laughs> Knocking into tables. <sighs> oh, all right. So let me just quickly pin the back, too. I just wanted like a warm, cozy house cardigan that I could wear out as well. Okay, so this is my back. And then sure I'm pinning this right okay yeah so this the this is the top one like so. I always like to just have everything right side up so I always know that I'm going to be pinning it in the right direction so this is the shoulder line so that and then flip there we go so I have all my sleeves pinned to my jacket I'm just gonna read a little bit ahead in the instructions to see what I need to do next Okay, so next I'll do the shoulder seam. So that's perfect that I'm doing the sleeves first. <laughs> you would think I would have looked at it before I go live, but this is truly just fly on the wall. I'm just sitting down and sewing. How much time to sew this project? I easily think I can do this in an hour and a half, um, maybe even an hour. It does sew up quite, quite quick. Because again, it's knit. I don't have to surge anything. There's not a lot of pressing. Um, all right, so let me get a stretch stitch um, on my sewing machine. And yeah, so this, this I, I, I'm confident that I can complete this um, entire cardigan in, in the duration of this live. I try and do all the projects that I do on these lives um, with the notion that they can be completed. So just so you can see like an entire tutorial. All right, so I'm just stitching away. And these are relatively similar stretch factors. Especially when hacking a knit pattern, you're putting two knit uh, fabrics together. You want to make sure that one is not a lot more stretchy than the other. It just makes sewing a lot more difficult and sometimes fit can be an issue as well. So these are pretty much similar stretch factors. You can see all these little fuzzies and you don't want those getting in your machine. So I kind of just clear them out as I go. But I do give them a really good shake after I, after I cut them as well. And I'm using a half inch seam allowance here. There's one. Oh, this is good. Look at how cute this is going to be. Oh, I love it. This will super match my pants that I'm wearing right now. Um... Right. Here's the other. There we go. Yeah, we're matching. 
matching them up quite well without stretching one too, too much over the other. It's nice to take a break and sew something to wear. I've been busy sewing holiday stuff uh, this morning. I was sewing some ornaments for my tree on the embroidery machine. And I've been sewing pillows and been trying to make a lot of my own home decor for the holidays. I want to make a tree skirt and um, stockings. So it's nice that I can just, you know, have a nice excuse and hang out with everybody here and sew something cozy that I can wear well <laughs> while I'm sewing those things. So here we have the back. I'm just going to toss it on the table. Now, my sewing machine has a built-in walking foot. This is the Epic 95Q, and it has this little um, uh, walking integrated walking foot that comes down. But I remember when I first stitched the sample of this jacket, so you'll see the main pattern image is 100% in this Sherpa. Um, and I didn't have this machine when I made it, and I used a walking foot to sew the Sherpa fabric and it, it made it super easy. And this fabric, the Sherpa fabric, is from Shannon Fabrics, my favorite brand of like all things fuzzy and soft and their faux furs are stunning. And the Sherpa fabric is amazing too. Oh my gosh, fuzzies. All right, last sleeve attachment. And if you don't do this hack, you don't even need to do the steps. So, <laughs> but honestly, I'm I'm doing this because I didn't have enough <laughs> of each to make cut the full one. So that's what hacks are sometimes out of, you know, you're just trying to make it work. If you don't have enough of a full fabric to cut your pattern, just make a seam line and add different fabrics together that a lot like I mean this is like the pattern feature but you could do this to like any top too right okay now this has like a, a shawl collar to it so you'll get kind of a demo on how um that is sewn together. Yeah, the built-in walking foot's amazing. You can see right here, I can integrate it up and down. It's super helpful. Okay. So now we are stitching the shoulder seams of the jacket and the facings together. So I'm gonna lay my jacket up first because I already have that, so my, my back. And then my front right sides together. Now, since this has a shawl collar, you'll notice the front has this little piece right here. So when you stitch the shoulder seam, you are only going to want to stitch to this point right here, leaving this extended at the top. So I'm going to match up the seams right here, and then I'm going to match up here. And then here, you'll see, sometimes you can mark in the seam allowance um, that corner point and the corner point right here. So that's like right there, and you can pin match that. So you'll be stopping, like there's be a little bit of allowance at the end because you'll stop stitching right at that corner point not all the way to the end
And what I also did when I cut um, these sleeves, I cut the selvage right up the sleeve hem so I don't have to finish it. So it kind of comes with this like raw edge that won't unravel because it's the selvage of the fabric. So just a little tip too when you're cutting out Sherpa, utilize kind of that edge for the hem so you don't need to, you know, turn it up and stitch it. Because sometimes it's hard to top stitch like fuzzy, fuzzy fabrics. So let me lay down this piece. And again, this piece will extend up. Matching up those seam lines. I'm just kind of finger pressing those allowances open. And I'm also going to, so I'm just going to put this um, right beside my sewing machine. And I'm also going to pin the shoulder seams of my facing together as well. fuzzy so maybe on this uh, we can you can see a little bit better so I'm going to pin these and so I'm going to stitch from here maybe if I can really zoom in there so right here for instance so I only want to stitch to this point so I'm going to start stitching here and I'm going to back stitch ending my seam allowance distance in from here and in from there so I'm really only going to stitch to there so that is that shoulder seam. So this point right here. Gosh, so many fuzzies. I think I'm also going to have to stitch the center backs together. So these, um, the center back is actually right here. So I'll stitch those like together after I stitch the shoulder seams. Call me. This is, see, this is totally live. I just want to make sure there's not an emergency. I just had two missed calls, so I'm just uh, messaging back. Um, um. <laughs> okay. Not an emergency, just... This is what happens when you're flying the wall in my studio and you know, I'm sure everyone can relate to just sewing and life and still happens outside of the studio door. So I'm going to start stitching. Okay. 
And an amazing thing about Sherpa and faux furs is if you make a mistake or your seam is not perfectly at the corner or, you know, anything like that, it's so fuzzy and it's such a high pile. It hides mistakes super well. <laughs> so if you, this is like a great way to sew a shawl collar for the first time because if you're not exact, you can't even tell. anyone just always lose their scissors there we go perfect all right let's stitch this, this one after stitching this I'll have to take my throat plate off and do a nice little de, de fuzzying clean to my machine and I also have a stretch needle in a size 90 in my sewing machine. So a ballpoint needle because the Sherpa is a knit as well as the sweatshirting fabric. So you guys can kind of see, this is the edge right here. And I'm only stitching to look out my seam allowance distance away. Okay, so we have, like, this is our facing. It looks like this for now. Because you can kind of see, this is our center back line, and then this is our neckline. So I'll pin the center backs after. <laughs> I might increase my stitch length a little bit. This is a thicker knit, so and with a high pile, I think I'm just going to increase it a bit. Also, so it stitches a bit faster. Stretch stitches can kind of take a little bit longer than a straight stitch, because it's going side to side instead of just down. So increasing the stitch length kind of helps, helps that a bit. fuzzy knits like Sherpas and stuff. Although knits like sergers are great for stitching knits, I like to avoid a serger on um, on these types of uh, fabrics just because they are so sheddy and fuzzy. Um, Esther asked how long. So my stitch length right now is at four, but it's a stretch stitch. So it's, um, it kind of, it, it zigzags like this a little bit. So it has some stability. So it is at a four stitch length on a stretch stitch, not a zigzag, but a stretch stitch. That was a good question. Okay, now I'm just, oh, I always triple check when I get to uh, points. Um, making sure everything's matched up. Oh, Ricky, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Uh, yes, um, if, you, if you don't follow me on my personal um, Instagram account, uh, I, um, this weekend I announced uh, my pregnancy, so yes, I am pregnant and <laughs> sewing in stretchy pants. Yes, I am um, feeling a lot better. Um, there were definitely some weeks at the beginning where I just wasn't feeling that well or feeling like sewing. So it's great to be back in the studio and I'm so happy and I'm 
so excited. So definitely expect a lot of stretchy <laughs> makes from me as well as baby makes. Um, it's going to be so much fun sewing for a little one. So thank you so much, Ricky. Um, we're very excited. Yeah, I've officially can't fit into my non-stretchy garment, so I've been um, sewing a lot of knits, and I it's great because I love knits. So right here, you see, I'm just going to peel this back. So this is about half of an inch, half of an inch in, and I'm just eyeballing it. You could mark it exactly. Um, so I'm going to start stop stitching. Um, Oh, thank you, Esther, too. <laughs> so you can kind of see right here. It's the end of my stitching. <laughs> it's just like, this is like the most, uh, diff not the most difficult seam, but it's just getting that point really helps make the shawl collar easier. So I just keep pointing it out. Last shoulder seam. Then really it's just we have the center back seam, the neckline, and the side seams. Um, and then we attach the facing to the jacket and it's done. I mean, it really, it does come together quite, quite fast. Oh, it's just so nice hanging out, stitching. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really, I don't know what to make next, uh, next month. I guess it will be, oh my gosh, almost the holidays. The, oh, just December comes up so fast. This year, I just want to go like full holiday mode. Last year, we moved into our new house at the beginning of December. So we were just like unpacking and we were, you know, starting to renovate the house. So like I didn't even open up my holiday decor boxes. So I'm making up for it this year. Like I already have a little tree in our sunroom and it's, I just, I want to make it, I just want to make our house so merry and I just... I kind of, you know, I, I've talked about it on the podcast before, but I kind of go in and out. You know, some years I'm just not feeling that festive, and some years I really am. Um, but this year I am. Ricky, a shawl collar is very lovely on a dress. Oh, yeah. I love a shawl collar dress. It's actually quite an easy collar to sew. Um, also on a coat. They're lovely in the Berta Style Code Certification course. That's the, my latest course in the third installment of the Berta Style course. There's like a, I go over like a beautiful wool coat with a shawl collar and it's just so elegant. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, all of our shoulder seams are stitched together. So now I'm just going to pin um, and stitch my center back uh, seams together. <laughs> yes, Ricky, move, moving is brutal and I will definitely go full out. <laughs> and I even have, oh my God, oh, I, if I didn't already pack it away in my um, closet, um, I, I'm going to sew it this week, but I have the cutest flannelette, not flannelette, flannelette, <laughs> oh jeez flannel um I think that's how you say yeah um flannelette uh 
holiday fabric. It's avocados dressed as Santa. So it's like lime green and pink. It's so cute. So I'm going to make some PJs for myself as well. Okay. So I'll let me zoom out so we can get kind of a full picture here. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, so I have these like ends here, right? So I'm going to put them right sides together. And I am going to sew them. So this little short seam right there. And then what happens is after that's stitched, you kind of close up the neckline by going like this and then stitching those together, which is kind of cool. So let me now do this. I mean, you could do this whole jack and then do the facing, but I like to do the same step in the jacket and the facing. Uh, at similar time. So now I'm going to fold this in half and stitch and pin that center back of my facing together. And it's so nice here too. I'm looking out the window. It's um, and we've been having our first snowfall this week and it's just so, it's so pretty and I'm happy because we actually managed to get all of our leaves raked before the snowfall too. nice about sometimes having a small studio is like from my sewing chair I can throw and kind of reach everything that I need in my loft sometimes before I would have to get up and walk um, to reach certain parts of my studio or get certain sewing supplies In the neckline. So what I'm going to do is I have my jacket that looks like this. You can see that opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kind of extension. I'm going to flip it back. But actually, you know what? Before I do that, never mind. I'm just going to mark. I'm just going to notch in my center back. So I'm just going to, what I do is I just quickly fold it together match up the edges and just clip you could just clip the center back um, before you take off the pattern piece so this enables me to better match up so again what I did is like that so now I'm going to just kind of finger lay um, or you could give it a light press um, if you have a stable knit that can take some heat um, and I'm going to match it up to that center back notch And then you're just going to kind of work your way and you're going to kind of close that gap. So that corner that we stitched to in the shoulder seam, you're going to start and end your stitching. Hopefully maybe this can focus. I don't know if you can see um, right there. So I'm going to pin right there. So it's going to stitch right there all along here. ending at this stitching line 
right here. So we're kind of closing the gap. So that's our neckline. So you can kind of see when it's sewn, you have that kind of built up shawl collar. out and I will put that there and then I'm going to do the same thing to my facing. There's my opening. I'm going to take those right sides together. And here like you can really see like with the Sherpa like if you don't hit that corner spot on you won't notice. <laughs> So I'm just gonna I'm just kind of locating where I stopped stitching. Right there. So I, I use a really matching thread, so I'm not having difficulty seeing it. There we go. Making sure this lays open my back. And then there we go. Just stitch that closed. Oh, thanks, Ricky. <clears throat> yeah, it's, actually, I it, it I had to refresh it when I filmed the course. I hadn't sewn a shawl collar in forever, but when I, when I had to film a video in August doing it, I had to relearn it, and then um, it's just been on the mind since. Um, but yeah, love a shawl collar. Jeez, where am I? Oh, there we go. My thread is so matching. I'm finding it hard to find at my point. Oh, I found it. There it is. <laughs> That's funny. When the thread matches too well. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. So I found it. And especially if you pin in Sherpa fabrics, make sure you really um, remember where you put them because they can really hide and get lost in that high pile. Always losing my scissors. Okay. All right, so we have our shawl. It kind of looks like this, and you can kind of see how it um, goes. Ah, it's gonna be so cozy. <laughs> The next step is the fun part because we're attaching kind of the outer um, shawl collar like outer line. So we're attaching the facing to to the jacket. This might this this seam might be easier to see if you can kind of see the start of that stitching line. I've also made this um, jacket. I should have remembered to bring it in to my studio from my closet. I have made this pattern in, in a wool and it takes on like a blazer, like a, a relaxed blazer fit and silhouette. I just, um, yeah, I used a wool, so I it can it can work for a woven and a knit. I use like um, a plaid fabric. It's super cute. Just making sure 
sure my center back remains open. And then you can kind of see here. I just, sometimes it's nice to kind of cross reference the pin so you know really where to stop stitching. So there you go, you can kind of see this more and you can kind of really see more that like, that's that corner point right there. And you can like clip into that corner too a little bit if you want. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, let's zoom this out, out a bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I'm inhaling some of this fuzz. Okay, so now I'm going to lay it kind of right side up. And I'm going to lay my facing right side down. And again, the first pin I'm going to match. <coughs> I definitely got some sharp on my throat, sorry. Um, is those center backs. So I'm going to pin these together. Now it'll be tempting um, to pin, like they, they, they can kind of mimic each other in the facing, the similar curves, but make sure you know it's the one with the seam. So this part of the facing does not have the seam, um, but this part does, that the collar part, this kind of sits in the back of the jacket. So make sure you match up the seams. So that can kind of help you determine which seam needs to go together. And then I just kind of shift over and then I work my way kind of down all the way to the hem. And I'm also trying to do my best to push in those Sherpa fibers inside the seam so when I sew it they kind of flip out and conceal the seam. So I'm kind of just like tucking them under. Maybe you can use little clips. Clips would work well for this seam if you have little even just binder clips or um, sewing clips. So there we go. And this is like all the way to the hem of the jacket. Cardigan, I guess. Well, I called it a cardi jacket because it really can be both. Like, like that sample that I stitched up all in Sherpa, that's definitely can be like a fallish just jacket. You could wear it over a sweater, over a top, and it can be a jacket. It's also like a nice cardigan. Really depending what you sew it in. You could sew it in a sweater knit. That could be super cute too. Yeah, I'm basically kind of, I always meant to sew this again. I gave my, the, the sample that's in the pattern that Pure Sherpa I gave to a friend so I don't have it. So I've been always meaning to remake it for myself. Okay. This is so funny. Like the hour leading up to setting up this live, I didn't get one text, one email, one anything. And now as soon as I go live, I just see my phone. <laughs> Lighting. Like, why does that always happen? Isn't that funny? Okay, so now I'm going to start, I'm going to stitch all along here, passing over. So this is basically the seam that kind of goes like all the way around. And then we sew the side seams and then we hem it and then we're done.
<laughs> oh, thanks, Ricky, too. Yes, podcast. It's just, we just still had so much more to say about sewing. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Um, It with the facing in a contrast in fabric. Oh, Esther, that's a really good question. What hem is ideal for Sherpa? Honestly, a, a hand stitch hem is good because sometimes top stitching and fuzzy fabrics, I don't know. Sometimes it really depends. Sometimes if the pile is, um, thick enough it kind of buries and, and hides it I would just really increase your stitch length I think on the sample I did like almost like a basting stitch like a straight stitch um because this jacket isn't meant to be like um super t like you don't have to worry too much about the hem being stretched um I like the shoulder especially like the shoulder and side seams because if you're reaching you want the stretch in here but just like the loose hem um could do a top stitch or a zigzag depending you could just test but um what i'm um the hem of this is the majority of the sweatshirting so i'm gonna do um i'm gonna do like a top stitch hem but for sherpa uh, i would maybe just even fold it like for example if this is a hem like i would fold it up and just loosely hand stitch because you have the thick pile um on the wrong side and you can catch this um, and then it's completely invisible from the right side. But then again, what I did for the sleeve hem is I utilized, um, this is the sleeve. I utilized the selvage of the fabric so it won't fray and it kind of gives this like fringe look, which I like. I mean, it's, it's, uh, dependent on what you like too, but it kind of, it's like this fringe, um, finished kind of raw look but I mean maybe later on the good thing about that is I can if I decide I don't like that anymore I can just turn it in and I probably will uh hand stitch it but that's a great question um or you can a lot of times I see like if you bind it you bind the hole um and then you use like um the binding uh, to, to hand stitch. Because sometimes if you catch this edge, it's kind of loopy and it can unravel. So if you want it more secure, you do some nice binding and then you hand stitch um, to the binding to secure that hem edge. Or you could even sew a face, like a hem facing could also work. So you would have like a seam at the hem and then you would uh, flip it up. So that could also, also work. Um, yeah, but I believe I, you know, I do remember I did like a really long basting straight stitch and it, it buried in the, in the, in the Sherpa and it wasn't, wasn't very noticeable. I have a meeting at one <laughs> so I have to, it gives me a hard deadline and out. Yeah, so if you, anyone has any ideas for um, the December sewing live, let me know. Maybe I'll sew a little New Year's Eve look. 
um, something maternity friendly. Um, and again, like it was uh, coming up in uh, American Thanksgiving is what next a week today, and on so daily we were just um, it hasn't it's publishing next week, but all the editors. Um, and uh, the sewing, uh, the lovely sewing team that we have at So Daily, we all kind of wrote why we're thankful for sewing. And as I'm, you know, thinking about, you know, not thinking about, I am be being pregnant, but thinking about maternity clothes. Like, I'm so grateful for the the skill that I have and the knowledge to make and adapt my own clothes. Um for my changing and growing body. I'm so thankful for this, for this skill. Um, yeah, my next, I really want to do a jeans upcycle um, to um, turn a pair, you know, of jeans into a maternity pair. I mean, you can. I mean, you can't buy them, but um, sometimes the ones that I, I like a certain length, like in a certain denim wash. So it's like you find that like there's a lot more options for just like denim that you can find that you can adapt to maternity. Um, oh, thanks, Ricky. You love sewing, but Deer and Doe um, is it the the giver dress was my favorite. Oh, I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Yeah, please recommendation. <laughs> I need it. Um, yeah, and it's great too because I you can even, you know, sew things that aren't specifically meant for um, maturity but but could work. I mean, I love a loose silhouette and stretchy clothes. Um, yes, jeans upcycle, fitted t-shirt dress, basically. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the giver dress. Fitted t-shirt dress fits beautifully over the butt. Oh, oh I'll, have, I'll definitely check that out. Thank you so much for the recommendation. See, I love doing these because it's just taking a long, boring seam and I'm literally learning. <laughs> I also talked about how I'm grateful for sewing for just me time I love being in my studio and I use it as a stress relief um and um and also like for multitask if I am sewing something that I've sewn before or it's just kind of an easy project I've been listening to so many audiobooks so I'm grateful for sewing for making multitasking so easy like I literally can quote unquote read a book and make something at the same time so okay so we're so close to the end of this exciting oh no I have a little tuck in here I'll have to fix that maybe I'll just quickly fix that now see see I make mistakes all the time too <laughs> so you see I have a little tuck where am I focusing here in that kind of corner right there so let me just unpick that because that's I mean it will be concealed oh should I unpick it oh the dilemma my perfectionism but like it won't even know you won't even notice it's there because this shawl collar roll and it truly is um oh 
I can pick it later if I want to. <laughs> oh, thanks, Esther. I'm grateful for how you all teachers put so along so we can see and not only read how to do it. Yes, I agree. Different learning styles too, like um, through just like experience and just practice, like turning were and you know just written instructions into a more tutorial um, I know people uh, learn differently and sometimes watching and seeing and um it's isn't easier for people so I'm so happy to do it and it's so fun for me um for sure so thank you for that okay so now we have Oh, da -da. So what is happening now? So you can kind of see it come together. So basically, if this, like, we're going to sew the side seams now, but let's say if the, I just like always love to give a little sneak peek for myself. Um, so basically this is the shawl collar like that. And this rolls on that back line. So we're, we get it looking like this. Look at that. Oh, how cute is this? Oh, I love this. And what I will do, like, on the inside, too. So this is, like, I don't like this flapping open. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to pin it for now, but I'm going to hand stitch it later. So I'm just I'm going to fix that little tuck. I'll do that after, but I can do that later. So what you'll do is, like, match these up the shoulder seams and just hand tack it right here on the allowance. So I'm just going to, oh, there goes my lint roller, pin it in place. So matching up the shoulder seams of the facing and the jacket. Um, and this is a good place to hand tack because it's on the seam allowance so you won't notice it from the right side. Um, and you could even hand, like I'll probably even like hand stitch this along here or you could do a top stitch as well. I mean, you definitely could do a top stitch. Um, like the facing lays in here, right? You could top stitch. You would see it from the right side. Maybe I could do that. You could follow the curve because the top stitching would be on the sweatshirting fabric. So there's so many options that you can do. But for now, I am just going to pin these shoulder allowances together making sure they're laying flat so I'm not like stretching one too and if I do end up top stitching this I'll probably end up I'll open it and I will flip up the hem and I will hem it and then I'll flip it back and then top stitch it so I have a finished hem but for now let's just quickly stitch up the side seams. So the side seams and the sleeve seams are one seam, which I love. So I'm just going to, again, I, I, I'm already finished my sleeve hem, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh, this is so cute. I think I might actually top stitch this. But I don't know though. I'll have to, I don't know. I'll see. You could totally add in an inseam pocket to this side seam too. The great thing about sewing too, if you have like a pocket shape from another pattern that you like, just grab that piece, cut it, and insert it according to those instructions. Um, sometimes it's fun to have, like I have like an envelope and whenever I like a pocket in a pattern, it could be a hip pocket or an inseam pocket or shape of a patch pocket. What am I doing here? I just, I just trace a separate pattern piece and keep them in an envelope called like pockets. A patch pocket would be really cute on this as well. Um, Ooh, do I have any? I'm thinking, do I have any Sherpa left? I think I used it all because I like a Sherpa patch pocket could be really cute on this. So now I'm 
I'm just gonna go and just stitch my side seams together. And even like, I'll take time after like this seam to kind of like roll it out. Um, but I wouldn't top stitch along this edge because we have the Sherpa here that kind of rolls to the right side. Last two seams, and we'll finish this jacket off. Do you know what I kind of want to do next month? I kind of want to do like a, a jumpsuit, like a stretchy maternity jumpsuit that would be fun and I'm also hosting a um a live next week if you're watching this later um or after the 24th. I'm doing it right on American Thanksgiving. Um, you can, it'll be, you know, recorded as, as these are to watch later, but I'm going to be stitching a festive like table runner and one that's like cute, you know, uh, I've been seeing like really cute ones, um, in the stores. And I want to make one myself. That's like my color palette for my kitchen and I'm going to be stitching that live, so it'll embody some machine embroidery, some quilting techniques, some batting, um, and just takes like a rectangle of fabric and make a really nice little festive table runner. I'm going with like a wintry theme for my um, decor too, because I have been known to leave up my decor for a long time I remember when we lived in our loft we had we had like a smaller uh, fake tree so it, it like I know with real trees they have a t you know you know when to kind of take them down because the needles are falling off um, but we had this fake tree and it got around to Valentine's Day in February and I just decided, I, I took off the ornaments and I put on like hearts and I made it into a Valentine's tree. <laughs> My husband was like, Meg, I think we need to take this tree down. I said, no, it just, a lit up tree makes me very happy. Um, so making like winter theme um, decorations I can leave them up mostly for the, the entire winter season. And if you are loving like pattern hacks, like how, I mean, this was a super easy one, just making a seam line, but I have a new course starting on So Daily. I think it starts December 2nd. Um, yes, it does start December 2nd. It's, it's a pattern hacking course and I take like a basic blouse camp shirt and I show you how to make it so many different ways. So if you're interested in learning more about pattern hacking make sure to check out that course um i filmed it in april last april and this is the first time we're running it so it is a brand new course um but there is one hack where i take like the blouse like the camp shirt pattern and i combine it with pants like our pagosa pants pattern and i make it into a boiler suit so that's like the ultimate hack i love combining um, 
sewing patterns together. It's super fun. And I make like a shirt dress and add fullness and it's super great if you just want to learn more about altering a sewing pattern for different styles. Go. Oh, we are getting so close. Then I think I can even do a little try on. I'll have to sew the hem. I think I can, I'll sew that off camera. Um, but I'm just going to basically stitch, stitch a hem with like a top stitching stitch. I usually like, it's like the same stitch that's on. I don't know if you can see on this camera, if we can focus. Ooh. It's my like favorite. Yeah, there it is. Th this is like my favorite top stitch. Um, and I'm gonna do that along the hem. Oh, but should I switch to gray top stitching thread? Or should I keep it this color and have it like, maybe I'll keep it this color so it brings in the facing. So many decisions <laughs> so it's have to make, right? Especially when you're sewing like two layers of Sherpa together too, the, the bottom one can tend to roll. So ever so often, if you see, I'm just checking up and making sure it's rolling flat because if it rolls under, it's not getting caught in that seam. So I just like to kind of do a little check and just kind of make sure it's rolled out. So I'm actually sewing it. But even like that was basically a um, shawl collar assembly. Like if you come across a shawl collar in another pattern, it's probably quite similar to the assembly of this one. Esther says, keep it the color of the shirt, but I think I'm going to. Um, and also since my machine's already threaded on it, you know. <laughs> oh, my Sherpa. Oh, <laughs> my, my Sherpa my foot <laughs> with it <laughs> oh it kind of looped around there oh the Sherpa knew it was my last seam oh no oh it did. yeah there we go <laughs> live and unedited unfiltered that's what this these lives are okay Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna kind of pin this um, inside a bit so we kind of mimic um, the hem. So you'll see here, now that we have that's these sewn, so this is the facing on the inside. So I'm just going to make sure that that seam is on the edge. And looks like this is trying to stretch a bit. So I'm probably just gonna, I'm gonna just even this out. I bet sometimes stuff happens. There we go. Boom, fix. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to flip this up. I'm probably gonna give this a light press um, here, but I'm gonna hand stitch it, this portion. I'm gonna hand stitch that and then I'm gonna start top stitching my um, hem from here and then this will flip in and the hem will be finished. But I'm just gonna pin this inside just so I can kind of get the look of it. I just wanna do a quick try on. So, and then this the hem, this being like um, stitched like that, I'll like hand tack it to the hem allowance so it'll keep the facing inside. Okay, just going to put a couple pins in there. This is 
so soft. And the pattern calls it, you can just sew like a fur hook and I like a large uh, hook in the center, but I'm just gonna leave this open. So I'm going to turn it to the right side and let's try it on. Try not to trip over my cords. Love the simple style and relaxed fit of this pattern. Does anyone know where I can get some good quality Sherpa that is washable? It does a lot of fun. Yeah, this one, um, Shannon Fabrics is like the go-to for faux furs and like cuddly fabrics. That's what this one is and I really like it. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Look at this. It's just like super comfy. So kind of the facing kind of, this shawl collar is meant to, I mean, you could even like hand tack it right here if you wanted to keep this open. Maybe I'll do that. But it's meant to kind of, the shawl is not too deep. So it's meant to like, roll a bit and then gradually go down to this is like the break point of the shawl in this pattern it breaks you know around the hip line um but oh yeah actually you know what i kind of want pockets i might add some patch pockets um but it's too and i obviously wouldn't wear this like baggy um shirt underneath but it's just like super cozy in the shawl Lays nice and it is super cute and the sleeves are nice and hem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some patch pockets and I'm gonna finish the hemline of it and then it is going to be finished. But I do love it. I think, I don't know. Do I want to kind of, so I'll hem it and then I'm wondering, do I wanna kind of tack it so it lays like that. I think I might. So what you could do, like right here, you just do some hand tacks, like several ways up. That could definitely um, work. Or I could just kind of leave it and then it just naturally kind of goes to the Sherpa in there. I might do some light pressing as well. But yeah, super easy, comfy and cozy little cardigan. I love combining the different fabrics together. I did this because I didn't have enough of each to sew it, but it's like cozy in the right spot. So I feel like cozy on my sleeves and around my neck. So it's like a built-in scarf too. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, make sure to tune in next week if you're around. Um, in the morning, I'm gonna be stitching how to sew a table runner live on YouTube and then make sure to tune in to the December Fashion Sewing Live pattern to be continued, but maybe a jumpsuit. So thank you so much for joining and I will see you next time. Um, yes, made it. So I, I'm i going to dig and see. I think I have some Sherpa left over, but I, I'm i already thinking some Sherpa patch pockets um to bring in that contrast again and more of the sherpa so i'm going to be either digging in my garbage for snack for uh scraps from when i cut this out or i think i put some away i have a tiny bit left but that's a great idea i made it so 